In this quick tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a teleporter system. So in this situation, in this example map, there's going to be two different rooms and they're completely disconnected. There's no corridor in between them but you can use a teleporter to go from one place to the other and you can go back and forth. So this is what I'm, uh, this is what I'm going to be creating in-game. I've got a teleporter here, you walk into it and it puts you in a different room. And you can use it back if you want to. As many times as you can. Alright, so let's see how to do this. So, once again, I'm going to start from a fresh map. I'm going to select Boom just because I'm used to it. Um, but this is a method that would work with any configuration as well. First of all, I'm going to make two sectors. And I'm going to make them, you know, kind of visibly distinct. So one is going to be a square and the other one is going to be an octagon. Like this. Shape doesn't matter, just go with whatever you want. And uh, the next step would be to figure out where you want to have your teleporter. I'm going to keep it simple and just leave it in the middle of the room. Um, so it's going to be one square over here and there's going to be one square over here. Now, when you choose the teleporter location, it's actually very important that you pay attention to this blue grid in the background. You want to stay on the blue grid. Um, I'll show you what happens if you don't stick to it. So. First of all, we've got our two rooms, right? Two distinct rooms. Let's raise these platforms a little bit as well and you know make it visible that there's something there. So I'm going to give them a, a teleporter textures. You find them under the hell uh, texture set. And I'll just give it this one. Of course, we've got a couple of unassigned textures here as well. Let's get rid of those. You can go with whatever you like. I tend to put tech wall 1 there or tech wall 4. I just like these. And I'm going to fill this up completely. Okay, so we've got our two teleporters, obviously, as you might guess. If you just walk onto the platform, nothing's going to happen yet. We've only textured it as such. Um, so as I mentioned, it's very important that you pay attention to the grid, the blue grid. If you don't put your um, 64 by 64 squared, uh, 64 by 64 square along one of these blue grid uh, boxes, then your texture is going to look messed up. So if I shift this one around, for instance, then you can see this looks wrong. This is not an actual teleporter pad, or maybe it's a very, very funky one, but this is the way it should look, and this is the way it ends up looking. Uh, the reason for that is that um, you can't change floor tiling. You can't change you know, where a texture starts and where it ends and how it's tiled. It's done automatically already, and you can't change it anymore. So pretty much every single floor texture if you look at it, it's going to be 64 by 64 in Doom. And Doom Builder just uses these 64 by 64 grids as a reference. You know, every single one of these blue boxes is 64 units wide and uh, 64 units uh, long as well. So if you've got a 64 by 64 texture, it's simply going to fit in one of these boxes. And if you move outside the box, the texture is going to be kind of screwed up as well. But you can see that the texture never actually shifts around, it's just that you're putting your box in an awkward spot. Anyway, let's throw in a starting position here. Uh, so play a start like this. And now comes the interesting part. So for a teleporter to work, you know, in the, in the kind of standard way, you have to specify what the teleporter destination is as well. And you do that by placing a thing on the teleporter pad. So you go to the things option and this is going to be our destination for instance so I'm going to right click in the middle go to the teleporter tab and select teleporter destination and this angle that you choose here it's going to determine what direction you're going to face as soon as you've teleported I'm just going to keep it at the default but it's going to depend on what kind of map you're making so I'm going to put one there but we also want this teleporter to lead back to this one right so we want to go both ways with the same teleporter here so I'm going to put a teleporter destination here as well Okay, now that's not enough yet, because suppose you've got three teleporters. How could you tell the game that this one's supposed to lead to this one and that it doesn't lead to some third one that you might have on, on this side, for instance? Well, this is where tags come into play. So when you select a sector and you right-click on it, you get this whole menu. And other than effect, you can also select an ident identification tag, this one. And normally it's zero, the default is zero, but you can give it a specific one. You can give it, for instance, one. 
and then this sector would be the only um, area in the game with a tag 1, so it's got a kind of unique identifier. Everything else is 0, so it's not really unique, but this one's a 1. And you can make use of that. So we're going to say this teleporter pad is going to lead to sector 1. And then we'll also say that this teleporter pad is going to lead to sector 2. We'll make this one sector 2. So we're going to give it tag 2. That's still not enough though because we haven't actually given the, the action that we're supposed to teleport around yet. So if you go in game, then we've already identified the sectors, we've got a teleporter pad, but it doesn't do anything yet. You know, even though we've specified a destination and everything. Okay, so... Again, we're going to make use of tags and also a specific action. So we gave this sector tag 1. And now we're going to say, if you walk onto this pad, which would be the same as just crossing any of these lines that make up the pad. So I select all four of them. Uh, then I want the game to teleport me to this pad, to the teleporter destination. So let me just right click on all these four lines and we're going to give it a specific action. Once again, I'm going to go to this menu here, which tells you, you know, every single action that you could put on it. And there's a teleporter tab here at the bottom. Expand this one. Again, there's a whole lot of options here. Most of, the, most of these are boom specific, but even in the original Doom configuration, you'll at least have this option, for instance. So walk, repeated, teleport. If you cross the line, and you can do it multiple times, it'll teleport you. All right, so we've got that. But where is it going to teleport us? That's what we still have to specify. Well, it's going to teleport us to tag one, sector one, right? So let's just give it tag one as well. Okay. So now if we go in game, and we walk through this line, it teleports us around. And we're now in a different room. We can't go back yet though, because there's no action specified for this teleporter pad. It only acts as an actual destination. So let's quickly fix that. Once again, select all the lines, the lines that make up the teleporter pad, and these lines should teleport us to sector two. So we're gonna give them tag two, so that it's linked to, to sector 2 as well and we're going to give it the same action so that would be walk repeated teleport alright so that's that now if you walk into this teleport pad it will take you to the other area and as soon as you walk back into the teleport pad it takes you to the first area so you can go back and forth like this and this is an extremely useful tool because it lets you go to literally any point on the map if you've got some kind of complicated map. It's very fun to experiment with teleporters. And that's it. That's all you have to do for it.